Yes. Speaking of parties, we've got a couple of birthdays to celebrate today. Um, we've oh, got, yes. So we've got Savannah with the blue hair and um, Juliette from France. Juliette. Wonderful. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Juliette. Happy birthday, Savannah. Oh, Alex, do you want to unmute so Juliette can say hello? Please do. Hi. Hello. Hello, Savannah. Hello, Juliette. Bon anniversary. Hello. Nice to see you. Come to see you. That's wonderful. Thank you. What time is it? Is it late? Is it, it must be late now where you are. Uh, 10. 10. Yeah, yeah. It's 10. Yeah. It's 10, uh, yes. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. No, did, okay. you, did, did you get anything um, for your birthday? Because it's difficult to get gifts during COVID, surely, no? Uh, I don't know. It's it, my parents. Yeah. It's in four hours from now. So she'll get her ah, present tomorrow. Ah, in four hours. Well, good luck. Yes. yes. Because, but she, you, Juliet looks like she's on a space station. It's a swimming pool. Yes. Ah, that's what it is. It's covered up. Yes. Well, I'm <laughs> so thrilled that you were able to join us on the eve of your birthday. Four <laughs> hours from your birthday. <laughs> Thank you. And how Thank old you. are you going to be again? Ah, oh, 13. I said 15. I thought I heard 15. <laughs> so 13. Yes, son. Ooh, so you're a teenager. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Bonne chance, mama. Oh, Merci. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And Savannah, your, your birthday too. Is, is that in four hours or is it, is it today or was it yesterday? It is tomorrow. <laughs> so, tomorrow. So yes, the same, it's tomorrow. The same identical birthday as Juliet. Yes, we figured oh. that out. About two hours ago. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's really great. And have you got anyone to celebrate with? My mother. This is part of the reason that I sent Mel a thing that said it's my birthday um, on Saturday is because this is about the extent of the birthday celebrations that I'm getting because COVID. Um, because I live in Florida, which is currently not only the worst state in the U.S. for COVID, but may have the worst numbers compared to most countries even. Yeah. How, how's tricks? Part of the other part of the reason that I put myself on this list today, despite having talked to you before, is that somehow in the process of talking to you before, I somehow managed to never mention the art that I do. I build paper sculptures slash costume pieces. Um, any of the cosplay people here will be familiar with Pepakura, which is a piece of software that takes a 3D model and turns it into a paper craft that you can assemble. I have surrounded myself with things to show off. So I made Daft Punk helmets. I have both of them. Oh this my is, goodness. This is not a normal Daft Punk helmet. This is actually a crossover with a Loki helmet, hence the horns. The actual And that is made of paper? It is made of paper. It is cardstock. I should have gotten the sheet that shows the pieces on it. Um, but it's I have them printed out on cardstock and cut them out. I have zero instructions for these. So all I get are this is very nerdy, so I'm gonna go full nerd. Any go full nerd. Free, any kind of 3D model that you look at is not as smooth as it looks. There are effects that are added when things are rendered that make them look smoother than they are. So most 3D models are actually just flat faces. So what Pepakura does is take those flat faces and print them flat onto paper like you just laid a three-dimensional shape completely flat. But the software yeah. obviously is not smart enough to generate any kind of instructions. So all I get are a stack of eight and a half by 11 cardstock that I print or I have printed out and they have numbers on them, which are the, the very fine like black spots you see next to the scenes yeah. are numbers. And each number has a mate and that's it. I have to sift through the pile and find the match for the numbers. The biggest project I have ever done, and I have pictures, is Yoshi from Mario, the video game. I did, I made a Yoshi. This oh, yeah. was for my aunt, and it was, oh, wow. I don't know exactly, um, but because they're numbered and they're numbered sequentially, I know it was two, 2,200 sync that I glued together. You, you're amazing. That's amazing stuff. So this is the That's one that you guys will actually appreciate. This is not finished. This is Deep Space Nine. It oh my is God, this is going to be so big. It it's is upside un... down. Savannah, you've got it upside down. I don't, actually. The top is not on it yet. <laughs> because, because I have no instructions, I have to think these things through a long way out because I have to be able to reach down inside them to glue stuff together. 
So I deliberately do not have the top on it so I can get down into it because obviously the arms are not on it yet. But yeah, How long is, is that going to take you? A long time. <laughs> I started it a while ago and it's not finished, but quarantine how long, is sort of How long could I ask Savannah, how long did the helmet, the Loki helmet take? It's been a long time since I made them, so I don't know, but probably a month or two. The Yoshi took three months. It was supposed to be a Christmas gift and it got given in February. The helmets and stuff were somebody else's design that I printed out. This one is actually almost entirely my own. I got a 3D, a small 3D model that was intended for 3D printing, opened it in Blender, did retopology to make it more simplified, opened it in Peppa Curry, did the layout. Like this is entirely my own project. And it's very big. I did go a little overkill on the scale. Well, I think you are categorically mad. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Wonderful and mad. Absolutely Thank amazing. You. You're Thank very, you very talented. Much. That's astonishing. I mean, it's really, <laughs> they're very beautiful, those are objects. They're just astonishing. Golly. Well, uh, that, so do, do your friends at work know about you? Your yeah, secret? yeah, they do. Yeah, they, they, so, they do. I, I don't know how I managed to not mention it the first time because everybody who knows me knows I do this. Um, there's a deer as well. There's like a large deer that I made who actually lives in my living room and like watches over. <laughs> we have a wow. shelf that's up very high and there's just a big paper deer just like watching over my house. Oh my goodness. I, it, it reminds me because we had some very good friends of ours. In fact, her parents were these very fancy British aristocrats. And one of the things they did was collect uh, carousel models. You know, the, the, the things you ride on in a carousel? Yeah all around their house with these beautiful carousel things. And it's that reminds me of exactly what you've got there because they can become this just wonderful art. They actually gave us one. They gave us a pig with a saddle. And I have it up in my barn. And it looks as if it's made of paper too. But that just that is just a, 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 ninja, a memory flash. And, well, uh, you just seem so happy. You just seem so jolly. And it's really lovely to see. Thank you. I've been told that. I had somebody at work say, you always have so much energy. And my boss, who understands me like no one else, says, it's not energy. It's anxiety. And I'm like, you get me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> well, it doesn't come across as anxiety. Um, it seems really very happy. It's infectious. Thank you. It's the kind of infection we need, you know. It's the kind of what one we want. We want to be, we want, we need this infection. That's, I'd like you to transfer it to everybody. I'll try to be the anti-COVID. <laughs> yes, exactly. The COVID superhero. Amen. <laughs> Thanks, Savannah. All right, next we're going to go to Jackie, who has been waiting to talk to Andy for months. Fantastic. Jackie! I know who Jackie is. Take it away, Andy. You know who I am? No, oh, no, you're not the right, you're the wrong Jackie. I mean, you're the right Jackie, but the, the wrong Jackie for me. Sorry. Hi, Jackie. Andy, you keep putting your foot in it. I think you... Oh, listen. I mean, what 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 would be a day without Robinson with a with his foot in his mouth? Not with his foot. You know, the title of tonight's episode was "With Grace," right? That's right. So, actually, this is something I've wanted a chance to say to both Sid and Andy for a very long time. Basically, I was raised in a very conservative home and um, didn't know anything about sexuality. Went straight. In fact, was convinced for a lot of my life that it was wrong. And then when I was trying to come to terms with who I was and um, the fact that I wasn't straight, I was rewatching New Space Nine. And um, like, I did not feel good about myself. I was really questioning everything about myself. And then I watched Garrick and Bashir and Julian Bashir, a genuinely good character, could accept a clearly gay character, even if they weren't in a relationship. And they were both open and honest with each other there. And it, it meant the world to me. And it got me through a really dark time when I when I wasn't sure if I could possibly still be a good person when I wasn't straight. And I just wanted to tell the two of you how much that meant to me. And thank you for that. You, yeah. That is yeah. yeah, that is so brave of you to say. It's also very touching. And I think a lot of people will share exactly that sentiment. Yeah. Where, where are you, Jackie? I'm in Austin, Texas. Austin. Well, that's a pretty liberal place. You didn't grow up in Austin, though, did you? I live there now, yeah. yeah. So how's Austin treating you? Okay. Not I'm, bad. I, yeah, I mean, I'm only here because San Diego is It's an acceptable substitute, but it's not San Diego, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. 
And is, is there a, a bit of a panic or are people now ready to be complacent with the latest surge in the virus in, in Austin? Because oh, I'm sure you're, are... you're, you're completely disciplined about it, especially if you have a disability. Yeah, yeah. I only go to the grocery store every other week with a mask. And yeah, but there's a lot of complacency still, unfortunately. And actually, I live pretty close to UT, which is the college with the most cases in the nation. So that's cool. Um, yeah. yeah, it's basically Austin is purple. It's not quite liberal, though it's liberal for Texas. Right. So there's right. still a lot of, yeah. So we what need, gives you, I have just one more question. because I, I, We I've really need a mask questions. mandate, honestly. You can't, you, you absolutely do. You're not going to get one. Um, it's just not going to happen. Uh, no. And, you know, that's a, they've tied it in with the Constitution in some weird way that I cannot understand because, you know, it's never been a constitutional right to give someone else an illness. <laughs> it's just, what? But um, it, I liken it to smoking. You know, people are very happy not to smoke in hospitals because they get it. Um, and it's, you, you actually have, you're in more danger from not wearing a mask around someone who is infected with this virus than you are being near cigarette smoke, for example. So it's kind of a very bizarre thing. However, I'd just like to ask, what's giving you the best, the greatest joy at the moment? What's what's your kind of vacate, mind vacation? Well, for one thing, I do have a cat that has been on. He comes, he's up here most days, actually. I don't, but of course, when he's wanted up here, he's not because he's a cat, so. Um, yeah, cats are contrary. Yes, they are. That's right. Um, but... <laughs> I've, I've been doing a lot of writing, which helps. And then just connecting through um, Discord and stuff with a bunch of friends. Like I'm playing D&D virtually with a couple of my San Diego friends again, which is nice. That's really cool. That's really cool. And is your writing, yeah. have you finished anything that you've, you've posted anywhere that people can go check it out? I, I did actually write an article for Medium on Star Trek and Disability. So that's up. Um, I posted Ooh. that up. And that's on, on, on Medium, it's called? Yeah, medium.com. And how would they anyone find that? Because there'll be people going, where's the link? Where's the link? Um, I can find that again here. Um, you will have to. Now, now we challenged you. We've got to, because that's a really good subject. That's a really interesting subject. Yeah, I mean, it's also kind of a timely subject. I wrote it this month because it's Disability Pride Month, and the 26th was the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. That's right. So those that. are, yeah, they're both really huge. So. That's fantastic. Well, please, if you can, as soon as we stop talking, just put it in a link in the chat, and that will be, you know, that, that goes down. That's, that's just on record. So everybody can, can whatever they want to do. I don't know. Can you cut and paste stuff from the, these chats? Probably not. But <laughs> someone can actually <laughs> copy it down to their own book, because I'm sure people would be really fascinated with that. And have you written a lot of fan fiction? I've written some fan fiction. Um, most of my stuff is actually original. So it's like short stories and I'm working on a couple of novels right now. And that's but. interesting. That's really cool. Do you write from your own stamp? Do you write autobiographically? Is that is that your source or do you try and project? Yes and no. Like my fantasy often, it's got, it's often from a female point of view. There's often a lot of conflicts that are kind of familiar from female angles. But again, it's fantasy. So it's taken out of this world and put into a world of, you know, centaurs or apple trees that throw their apples at you, like from Wizard of Oz. <laughs> and it's distanced a bit. Just, yeah, but that's some It makes the messages funny. easier. Yeah, yeah, it's, you're not kidding. We couldn't say any of the stuff we talked about on Star Trek. Uh, we hadn't been a sci-fi. Or if, and, and fantasy is the same way. You just can't talk about anything relevant. Because yeah. <laughs> well, you just get consigned to the political rubbish heap. You need some good moves. Well, that's fantastic. Listen, I'm just, I'm really grateful to you. It's very touching talking to you. Thank you. Thanks, Jackie. Uh, we're going to go to Irina from Croatia, who has also been waiting to chat with Andy, and now she's got the bonus of Armin as well. Hello, Irina. Uh, I have a lot of things to say. I have a story to tell you, actually. I wouldn't be here on these Zooms if it wasn't for you. Last year, uh, I rewatched DS9 with my husband, and I realized that as a kid, since I lived in Croatia, we got DS9 a, a bit later than everybody else. I realized because I was so young, I'd missed a lot of the context and all of the subtext. So my eyes were open. So I delved into fan fiction. I delved into reading more of the story about Garrick and Bashir. And I realized, actually, that you had written a book, A Stitch in Time. I tried to get a physical copy, but when I saw the price, I was a bit, um, it's a bit out of my price range. They go for about $100 with shipping. Oh, that's so ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, 
I'm considering buying it eventually, but I, I opted for a Kindle copy. That was more my speed because, as you so eloquently put it the first time you were here on Zoom, acting is a vow of poverty. <laughs> and don't I know it? <laughs> so, yeah, I read the book in like two days. I devoured it. I loved it. I cried at several points. Then I got my hands on the Nexus. I read that too. I cried. At some point, I like got off my chair. I started screaming. I needed to pace around my apartment a bit and go like, did this really happen? This happened. This actually happened. And I have a question for you, if you would be so very, very kind and patient with me. Whose idea was it to have Garrick ask Bashir to tell him he loved him half a dozen times? I don't know. But I but 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 I'll go I'll go back to the very beginning is that it was, you know, when I was when I was first when the very first episode where I played Garrick and and I and my character was only there. Me, Andy Robinson was only there because they needed a, a playmate for Bashir, they needed they needed you know to weave him into the into the series with a, with a with a decent storyline. And so when the very first time I met Sid, I thought, wow, this is one of the most beautiful looking people I've ever seen in my life. And although I'm 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 you know I am who I am, uh, I thought. <laughs> what? Why 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 that that should be part of this you know and 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 indeed why can't Garrick have sexual feelings and why can't his sexual feelings be uh, valid more more universal more liberal than 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 the, you know, the, the Americans were were such squares. I mean, we really are. <laughs> We are repressed for the most part, since it's so sad still to this day. And so that was my idea, because that was honest. And, uh, was and so, yeah, so that's all I have to say about it. Okay, okay. So basically what I wanted to say, do you know those infuriating people who even at the age of five know exactly what they want to be doing with their lives? I don't know any of those people. I Honestly. know some of them. Oh, you and do? And then they... And then they, you know, go and accomplish all they wanted to do. And I'm like wandering around aimlessly. <laughs> do, you, do you know a lot of these people, Irena? I know some. <laughs> okay. I know some. I guess I'm going like, to say maybe, maybe Croatians are, you know, a, a whole <laughs> other breed apart. I doubt. I Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, basically what I, what I wanted to say, I didn't have a role model growing up or a you know, somebody I could aspire to be like in a professional sense. And I've been acting for a while now with like a pause to go to the university and then realize, oh, wait, I like French and Slovak just fine. But if I'm forced to stay in a cubicle and translate legalese for the rest of my life, I'm going to, I'm going to die. <laughs> so I went back to acting and uh, I realized through your writing and a lot of your interviews and just the way you approach things when you act and, and the way you speak about Garak. And I realized I just, there's some people in the world that we just feel inexplicably close to in a way that we kind of understand the way they think or we relate to what they think. And I remember you said something about your finest acting being in the wire and that you had sent the video to somebody and then that person was like, eh, that, that, that's cool, but give me real acting. And I was like, what? What could possibly be more real than taking something that does not exist on this world and infusing it with so much humanity that it comes alive? I mean, that's because you it? have an imagination. That's yeah. because you have an imagination, which is, you know, for okay. me... That's that's the most precious thing in my life is my imagination. Yeah, you know, um, and that's and that's why I became an actor because I, you know, because I, I did that that was my power. And I think and it doesn't and and that's not just for actors. That's all of us have an imagination, and most of us don't understand that that's that's atomic. That is that is a gigantic and amazing attribute that we all share and and most of us are you know we're taught you know from from very early ages you know to, to believe that so oh, that's fantasy oh you're silly oh what you why are you into star trek and you know 
the thing is, is that it's a, it's the imagination. That's what that's what keeps us alive. That's how that's how we create the world that we want to live in. That's what that's all about. I was in a very bad place from 2015 to 2018, and I was just going through a trauma and learning about narcissistic abuse and uh, uh, CPTSD and finding out what had happened to me. And I hadn't written anything in years. I hadn't composed anything in years. I hadn't drawn in years. I was just creatively dead or numbed inside. I still had acting and that was good, but I was I was kind of boxed in. I wasn't free. I wasn't open. I, I was not open. I'd been, I'd been wounded so much that I was just close to everybody. I'd lost contact with friends, with, with people I'd been close to. And then after a stitch in time, it was as if something in inside me had cracked open again after years of, of just nothingness and I um I saw what happened with Garrick and Bashir in the extended universe books and I was just this is wrong it feels wrong like the trajectory that Garrick had in a stitch in time seemed like he was more or less done with the shadows like he wanted to go into the light or try be a better person and leave this part of life that had wounded him so much behind him and the storyline that Bashir got was even worse because it seemed like he got like yeah let's make him a super spy and give him more trauma and then I decided you know what I need to write a story I need to write a story where they get to heal where they get to go on a journey of healing and and just growing and becoming happy again and finding purpose so I thought it would be just the story of 30 to 40 chapters it would be brief and then brief 30 it. 40 chapters yeah yeah now now that you hear how many chapters it ended up having <laughs> kind of yeah, what's that Cardassian yeah. novel the, the the never ending <laughs> <laughs> sacrifice yeah except not so much on the sacrifice bit right so I posted it not expecting anything I hadn't posted anything in years, fanfiction-wise or otherwise. Uh, I hadn't expected anything. I thought maybe one person would like it, and that would be it. And I would have been happy with that. But then suddenly, people <laughs> really liked it. And they started talking about it and recommending it. And I started composing a whole soundtrack for this story that I made and drawing again. And it ended, it ended up having 105 chapters <laughs> with <Wow>. the epilogue. <laughs> and, uh, wow. where, do you, where do you find these people, Sid? I mean, <laughs> you have some of the most creative people I have ever met on this thing. Absolutely, we do. Hundreds. Oh my God, and, that's extraordinary. And I just told myself last year as I was writing it, I wrote the bulk of it last year. Um, COVID kind of put a dampener on my creativity, but I, I, I felt really compelled to finish because I'm the kind of person that starts a billion projects and doesn't finish <laughs> most of them. But I was really motivated to finish this one and I actually managed to do it, which is unheard of for me to finish something. It's the novel <laughs> the size of a Moby Dick. It has 230,000 <laughs> words. It's freaking huge. <laughs> but uh, I told myself last year, you know how people sometimes have these dreams that we don't expect to come true. We don't expect things to happen. Like I might have dreamt in my crazy imagination that I would one day meet you somehow. Go to one of those conventions that are too expensive for me to attend. I can't afford flights or like conventions or hotel stays or anything. But I had this idea in my head that I, if I ever finished the story and the soundtrack, that I would somehow find the chance to meet you in person to present this to you and to gift it to you as my love letter to your love letter because you had saved me from a very dark place. And I find myself now after having taken that chance to share my story with others, with new friends, with a community that greeted me with open arms and with nothing but kindness. And me, I'm, I'm a massive introvert and I, I never had many friends or at least not good ones or at least not friends I could fully relate to but now I have a community 
I have friends. I have really good people around me. I have made connections in the industry from really kind people in the chat who have both offered their help to me. And this has just been such an invaluable experience for me. And I never expected any of it. And if COVID hadn't struck, I never would have gotten the chance to speak to Mr. Sadeg. I never would have gotten the chance to speak to you. And I just wanted to ask, I mean, it, this is presumptuous and I kind of feel like one of those men that ask their girlfriends to marry them in front of a stadium full of people. <laughs> Peer pressure. You're making me nervous. I don't want to, no. <laughs> I don't want to be that person. Oh, oh my God. All right, Jess, spit it out. Spit it out here, Rainer. <laughs> would, you, would you accept this gift? I mean, I would not expect you to read it, but just to know that you have it somewhere and that you know that it's out there and there's yeah, a whole soundtrack of, of music. Of course, of course I would. What, what am I going to say, no to you? I mean, this, that, would be, <laughs> that would be really kind of math. Uh, no, uh, yeah, absolutely. A absolutely, I would accept that to you, from you. You know, yeah. Oh, my God. Irena, I mean, you're, you're beautiful. Thank you. You really are beautiful, uh, you know. One last thing, I promise no no questions or anything. Um, basically, my dreams came true right now, so I'm, I'm a bit overwhelmed. But <laughs> this world kind of conditions us to repress what we feel a lot of the time to either fit in or to please people or not to make a problem or a scene or, or whatever. But I just wanted to say this because I truly mean it. Um, I love you, Mr. Robinson. Oh. As a human it. being. I as accept. a person. I accept. And even though you may not have gotten all the rewards that you deserved or gotten all the roles that you may have wanted, you left behind a legacy that can still inspire people and does inspire people. You left such an impression on the world and you left behind a role so transformative so powerful and you are my favorite actor not necessarily i mean there are many beautiful actors who act wonderfully but you're my favorite actor because of your approach to the characters that you've played the fact that you can love a character so much even decades after inhabit him still and have him be real inside of you and speak with him speak about him with such passion that is what i find truly aspirational and thank you thank you thank you Thank you, Irina. Thank you very much. That's a really beautiful message. Thank you. We're going to go to Nikki, who is here with her boyfriend, who I believe is maybe a recent DS9 convert. Take it away, Nikki. Hello. Hi, Nikki. <laughs> Where are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> I, I spoke to you before. I was previously in Sussex. I absolutely. I I, I thought. I just thought I did. I, I, yeah. <laughs> but I've come up to Essex to be with my boyfriend, Chris. Hello. Oh, that's fun. Really lovely. What do you do for fun? What's, what's, what, what, how do you entertain yourselves? I'm a historian by trade. So most of my, my downtime revolves around history um, yeah. in some capacity. So I'm either you know, been buying um, to add to a reading list. Every, basically, I make reading lists every year. I'm a weirdo and, and I have to read the reading list in you know, historical, thematic, chronological order. You know, then go and do next year. So you know, one year it will be the Enlightenment, then the you know, Revolution period then it will be you know 1914 to 45 and then reset off we go so a lot of these things of course you know um historical films and dramas and things like that which i've respectively you know seen, seen your good self in, in in the past and naturally enjoyed um, <laughs> i've made watch everything <laughs> yeah 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 oh yes i did a i did a i did one you could say it was historical um a dangerous man Oh, really that was a good film. Historic. Really good yeah, film. That was a really um, good film. And it's 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 also a period and a theme that's you know it is a century on now from from the, from the events. Not when you were in the film, but it's it's <laughs> sorry, it's um it, it's it's a period and, and a theme that's even today completely misunderstood when we look at things like um you know Daesh and ISIS in um Syria and Iraq. We're looking yeah. at the fallout of of what you guys were addressing in that particular film, which is how you know an Anglo-French diktat on a bit of paper can, can be an absolute, you know, disaster for, for human yeah. beings. 
Just divvy it up, boys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's who, who loyal. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember that. And Balfour and Lord Curzon and all that. And how all these poor, you know, the, the Prince Faisal, who I played, was obviously a, mm. just a puppet, you know, who was just yeah. there to. Yeah. And so was Lawrence. T. Lawrence was also a puppet. Yeah. <laughs> they were then Muppet, more, more like. And yeah, was, yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> really, they didn't have any understanding. They felt they were grandized. They felt that they were going to get. He was going to be the the rightful leader, of uh, Hashemite king um, of uh, a, a Hashemite country, and in the end, it all went Al, Al-, Al- Saud's way, and Saudi Arabia was this got all the spoils. Is yeah. that your area of interest? Um, does sound like you like everything, by the way. Yeah, historians. I mean, I mean, I, I always say that we're uh, jack of all trades, master at nothing, because you know we we cover such broad broad periods however when it comes to pub quizzes and they're saying that we don't we, we then specify and say not my period you know <laughs> not my period sorry son no nah, no i don't do that too obscure for me you seem pretty young if that's not an offensive thing to say um <laughs> you it, it, what so you probably still remember what got you what who what got you excited in in academia in history what yeah, what because yeah, what, you probably can pass that that bug on to, to someone else so what yeah, got I mean, you for, for me, the, the clincher was a, a factor, I suppose, of two things. One, my parents, who, um, God bless them, they'd um, take me, you know, when, when we go to holidays, we go to Havens, and there'd in, inevitably a cast, be a castle or a church nearby. So we'd be, we, we, we legitimately weren't being dragged around. We wanted to seize that stuff because it was encouraged to be a cool environment where you can find out yeah. cool things and so on. And, and the other, the other two of my grandparents. And um, I, during lockdown, my granddad was eighty-eight, and my nan was 80, uh, 82. and they were young during the Second World War. And it's so cliche, and that, and they're they're both that um, um, they, they live in uh, Bexley Heath, and um, during the war they were in East in the East End, and you don't even need to ask them a question; they'll tell you about the war. You know, yeah. it's it's that sort of generation yeah. where, where you know you'll you'll be you'll be drinking the pint of cider with your grand and you'll say, Oh, you know what, you couldn't do this during the war, could you? Because then bloody V twos will be coming over. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, yeah. <laughs> and I feel go, well, you know, my nan would say, I'll put I'll put I'll put the kettle on. I tell you what, we didn't have a lot of tea during the war, did we? Yeah. <laughs> and off she goes again. And uh, <laughs> you so you hear all those stories, you're instantly yeah. endeared yeah. to it and they they take me through East London, Woolwich and Islington and all those places and Elephant and Castle to the you know, the Imperial War Museum and tell me the stories and yeah. Because you, you know, you were they, really were they were your grandparents Vackies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well funny enough, both of them were and both of them got sent back to London because Will you just um, explain what a Vacky is? Because it's gotta yeah. be a uniquely English thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, for for our, our American friends, it's it's probably quite and all over the world friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. True. Um, yeah, basically, at the beginning of the war. Um, weirdly enough, few people know this, but at the beginning of the war, children were evacuated away from coastal regions, coastal towns like where I am in South End, um, and they were evacu- evacuated to London because it was thought London would be the safe space. Um, because the, if the Germans are going to invade us, they're going to go to the, to the beaches, so that all the kids go off to London. Inevitably, the Blitz happened. Massive bombing raid. About sixty thousand people were killed during um, during the Blitz. Absolutely appalling. Um, whole cities were, were or, or regions of cities were, were laid waste. So the children were evacuated to protect them from from the bombing raids. Midlands, uh, the north of England, Scotland, Wales, places like that. So um, ch- children would be separated from their parents five years or so. And you know, families were separated for so long they didn't recognise each other when they were reunited. Um, my, my grandparents were evacuated, but they hated it, so they went back to London to face the Germans. <laughs> they, they didn't like the country. <laughs> well, as a historian, I'll give you a tidbit of uh, a bit of trivia. Mm. My stepfather, who's no longer with us, called Michael Burkett, um, his father, so my, it's my step-grandfather, I don't think such a role exists, was one of the two judges at the Nuremberg Trials sent from England. Nice. So he was there, were, and Michael, my stepfather, went to Nuremberg at the end of the war, obviously, um, mm. and hung out uh, while all the trials were happening. And he was allowed to bring one of his friends, and he brought his friend with him. And so they met the Poland, the, the, all of the, the Russian uh, um, judges, the American yeah. judges, 
they had a, they had a whole social scene. I mean, quite ast- quite astonishing. So I, I've got one connection to that that kind of history, but otherwise, born in Africa, no, nothing about. Thank you for wheeling him in. You are definitely the first historian I've got to, and that's fantastic. Thank you very much for coming in. And yeah, and sharing that. Um, really, you. really cool. I wish I was more knowledgeable that I could tease more interesting information out of you in, in, in the short <laughs> 15 minutes that we have. But thank you, thanks to both of you. Thanks, uh, Nikki, Thank you very much. For that. Thank you. Um, welcome back anytime. Welcome back anytime. Okay, I was just getting ready to message our friend Steve and let him know that he's next. Hi, Sid. Good um, to see you again. Yeah, you too. So I asked you a question the last time I was, well, the first time, the only time I was on, um, that uh, something I could potentially use uh, in the comic. So uh, what we, we what we ended up doing was we made a comic about, based on my experience on your Sid City show. Oh, um, good idea okay so that's the opening page uh, and these are the characters from the comic and so it takes place a thousand years in the future but they're <laughs> they're in quarantine also uh, <laughs> this is fantastic <laughs> for a different pandemic but um and there's nana and there's you what we do is um we do characters uh based on real people but as aliens uh, <laughs> that's really amazing they're called lecrues and they're the the comic first aliens and so, oh, there is the zoo. Yeah, a lot of these. Well, not not all of those. About half of these are based on actual um, Zoom participants uh, in Sid City, and then the rest of them are comic first characters. But some of you might recognize yourselves in there. This is just fabulous. This is great, Steve. It's Thanks. This is the kind of thing. We love. Here at the Comicverse, we want to give a shout out to all the medical professionals like Dr. Bashir here, who work tirelessly and selflessly every day to save lives. Thank you, yay. <laughs> the opportunities remind everyone we still need to be vigilant. Wear your masks in public and practice social distancing. All the Star Trek characters are willing, determined, and intelligent and would lay down their own lives to save others in times of crisis. All the nurses, too, of course. And Earth Year 2020 was one of the most harrowing and difficult times for everyone on Earth, especially those on the front lines like medical professionals and essential workers. We salute you and send a big dragon hug from all of us here on TNTAR Station in the 31st century. <laughs> Excuse me, Ying. Duty calls. See ya, Doc. <laughs> Fantastic, Steve. Thank you. That's really great. That's a, an animation. It's hilarious. Brilliant. Well, more puppetry than anything. Thank you for that. Thank you. So, I thought it, I was wondering whether it was sort of, but I, I, I guess he, Bashir himself became a puppet too. Yeah. Is so, that one of that's the, the that's, dragon from the com, from, yes. from, from comic verse? Yes. His name is Ying. And Ying is up. This is called a stuffy, and one of our readers uh, made them made them for us. They made a few of them actually. Wow. He's cool. He's very cool. So I'd love to come on sometime as Ying and uh, interview you as, as Bashir, if that's okay with you. Sure thing. Yeah, come and come, Ying, Ying, and I'll come on as Bashir, and we'll um, we'll do a, a, an interview. Great. Now uh, it's going to be going to get me on my toes because I won't have the questions beforehand. So it'll be kind of fun to improvise. <laughs> yeah. yes. That's exactly what Ying had in mind. Great. Let's do it. Let's make it. Let's make that happen in the next few. I won't make him talk now, though, because Bianca says, uh, Bianca, the writer of the comic, she says I'm very bad at, uh, uh, what do you call it, ventriloquism. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It's, it's you don't want to be on screen. screen. Yeah, not good to be on screen at the same time as Ying. No. Because, uh, yeah, we can see your lips moving. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you for that. That's really brightened everybody's day, I'm sure. It's really, really lovely and funny. Good. Oh, and I, um, I hope it's okay to... Uh, Publish the comic. Uh, it's, of course, we don't use anyone's actual names. Uh, we... No, don't be silly. Absolutely, it's okay. Um, it's not something you have to. I'm delighted you asked, but if you hadn't, I wouldn't have raised an eyebrow. Yeah, well, uh, I, I always ask just in case. Thank you. All right, we're going to go to Valentina next. Hi, Valentina. It's great to see you. Hi. Sorry, we left so late because it must be really late where you are. No, no, it's uh, it's eleven p.m. Uh, I'm where from. Italy. North or south? South. I live in Sicily. Where all the know. good food is. Yes. <laughs> really. <laughs> in Italy, it's a little more difficult to to get conventions, big conventions uh, about Star Trek. Uh, I was planning this year, we have a convention in my city, 
uh, about uh, everything comics, uh, books, uh, movies, uh, also fantasy, science fiction. And uh, I was looking forward to this because uh, it usually is in September. But uh, thanks to this COVID, uh, there won't be a convention. Yeah. Uh, I I had already uh, bought a costume. I was going to I was going to cosplay. But no, <laughs> I, and the cosplay is so much fun. Save it for uh, next year. Yes, save it for next time. <laughs> yeah, I was going Gosh. to dress up uh, in a uniform as a Star Trek Voyager or in Deep Space Nine. Uh, I that's... already I already got to the track order and father and uh, <laughs> he had to paint, paint the father <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> I had everything ready but uh, I've been working from home and I had the time to to prepare everything but I I, I wasn't sure in fact that uh, the convention could be could have taken place and in fact uh, it was yeah possible. it's yeah it's going to be definitely cancelled that you know if, if it wasn't for Italy. We wouldn't be doing this because what inspired me to to get this going was not a Zoom thing. But me- remember, in uh, in the north, they were standing on the roof and standing on the balcony and singing and yes. playing during the lockdown. Yes, um, we did it uh, every every day at, at six pm. We went to the balcony and uh, playing Italian songs. <laughs> That's exactly what made me want to do this because this is ex- this is my version of it because I don't you know I can't we can't sing and everybody can hear us but this is the same thing we're all singing on different. You've done, you've done a, a really a really great work uh, in doing that and keeping company <laughs> to to all of us who are back home. We're all liking we all like each other's company. That's what's that's really terrific. I know. Um, so what do you, what do you, you said you're working from home? Yes. I, I work uh, at the university uh, as an ad- administrative clerk. Uh, I, in, I, t- I support uh, research projects. It's interesting. What, what, are your, what is the research that, that, that comes out of your lab or your, out of your institution? Uh, I am in, at the, the University of Palermo, and uh, we do research in, uh, in, uh, in many fields, engineering, uh, biotechnology, new, new treatments for, uh, for disease, uh, I can talk, I can think of everything about yeah because you're of, across the board because uh, yes because uh, there's also geological projects yeah uh, one that, that that deals with that tsunami yes what um what do you, do you are you living with um family are you living how, how's your situation yeah I live with uh, my mother actually I wanted to ask a question of because, course uh, how can I get my boyfriend of ten years? To like Star Trek. <laughs> mm. In ten years, I haven't succeeded. <laughs> difficult. That's very, difficult. very difficult. Have you tried the Next Generation? I tried with a movie, the Next Generation movie, with a uh, movie with the cast of the Next Generation. But he liked that. But it's not. Yeah, convinced. I think that's the entry level. I think that a lot of that's the kind of gateway Star Trek for a lot of people because Next Generation is very commercial and very fast paced and. You know, very great fun, and there's some wonderful characters. Deep Space Nine is pretty hardcore. It's pretty, t- it's you know, it's full on. <laughs> yeah, but I think that in the, in the end, uh, maybe he could uh, he could uh, like the the last seasons of Deep Space Nine with the Dominion War. Uh, my, yeah, I think maybe- yeah. That might be good. Does he like um, Mandalorian? He likes the Star Wars, but uh, he's not uh, really so much into it. Yeah, yeah. Well, if, I mean, yeah, if, I, if he does, I follow, I follow your advice. I, I'll begin with the, the next generation. Begin with the next generation, and maybe you know, I don't know, Hollow Sweet, Q, Data, the fun, the kind of fun stuff. I mean, there's some lots, lots of good fun stuff, but yeah. sometimes there's there are Star Wars fans that will never be Star Trek fans. It's just no, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> because they prefer they, they prefer fantasy to science fiction. So they they and Star Wars is a sort of fantasy, I think, more than a science fi- science fiction. Yeah, it's a, it's a little less uh, real. Uh, it's totally a, a little less, less real take on uh, on things. Yeah, I mean, we've already had the telephone that flips open, which came from Star Trek, and it's already gone. But we still haven't got a lightsaber. It's just not going to happen. Yes. It's fantasy. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very very much. You're very welcome. So, Daria, 
her connection is not strong enough for her to perform live. So she recorded um, herself singing a beautiful song that I'm going to play in just a minute. But Daria, do you want to talk about it a little bit? Hello, everyone. Hello again, Daria. I wanted to share this song in the first place because um, I've learned it in the camp and was uh, I think it was 15 or somewhere that age. And this particular song helped me to get through every um, difficult situation in my life, starting from uh, high school, the exams, the beginning of the university and uh, every you know, emotional stuff. I perfectly remember that um, in the May, I was re really remember trying to think it myself over and over because I tried to, uh, to destroy my mind eventually well and um, i realized that i should share this uh, song with all of you because uh, i know in my country the lockdown situation is you know, times better than in america or every other country because i really uh, choose in uh, in which lake maybe river or even ace of sea i can go with my friends on the weekend and you're still not allowed it to leave your home and maybe this could do now help you like it helped me for years. So Thank you. That's a pretty press story. Thank you. Новых брюках, широких золотых длинных. Мы протили в развал, кучить на бок пыла голова. Мы придумали море таким, как на старых картинках, и условились так, что открыты не все острова. Острова мы придумали море, таким, как на старых картинках, и условились так, что открыты не все острова. Мы придумали город, где сушатся старые сети, где базары причал одинаково рыбой пропал. Мы придумали город. В котором суровые дети И развешаны компасы вместо часов на столбах На столбах мы придумали город В котором суровые дети И развешаны компасы вместо часов на столбах Мы придумали совесть Такую, что дай Бог любому, Если где-то беда, ты попробуй-ка спрятать глаза. Если крик за окном, ты попробуй не выйти из дома. Если в шторм кто-то тонет, попробуй гасить паруса. Паруса, если крик за окном, ты попробуй не выйти из дома. Если в шторм кто-то тонет, попробуй гасить паруса. А потом, как положено, возраст такой наступает. Вырастаем мы солочек детства из милой земли. Стрелка полю сменяет, и город придуманный тает. И пора уходить, и пора нам сжигать корабли. Корабли, стрелка полю сменяет, И город придуманный тает, И пора уходить, и пора нам шикать корабли. Только я обману вас, Я прическу сменил и походку, Ну а парусник шок, чтоб похуче была и крепка. Золотой янтарной, Смолой просмолил свою лодку И отправил на ней по морям своего двойника. Двойника золотой янтарной Смолой просмолил свою лодку И отправил на ней по морям своего двойника. Лодка эта приходит не в солнечный день, а в ненасте. Только знаю, что если глаза мне застелят туман, Если я промолчу, откажусь от чужого несчастья, Город мой, мою лодку, имя сошет капитан. 
Капитан, я себя проволчу, откажусь от чужого несчастья. Город мой, мою лодку, имя сошел капитан. That's very brave, Dalia. That's so pure. It's such a pure performance. I really enjoyed that. Thank you very much, Dalia. And with that, and it's a perfect way to end our evening because it put a smile on my face and hopefully everybody else's too, I will say good night.